String Theory, a sequel. If you can recall from the previous video, we found out that one theory for how the universe works is that everything is made up of tiny vibrating strings. Depending on how they vibrate, they can be electrons, quarks, photons, or any of the other fundamental particles. Also remember that this theory, called string theory, helps to unify the two main theories of motion in the universe, general relativity, which deals with large objects, and quantum mechanics, which deals with really small objects. But what was not answered in the previous video is how strings vibrate. We now seek to answer that question. Let's begin with a discussion of dimensions. What is a dimension? It is simply a fundamental direction, like the x, y, and z axes on a graph. But what does this mean? Let's start from the ground up. A point is simply a position in space. It does not have length, width, or height. It does not take up any space at all, that is, it has zero dimensions. It also has no direction. But if we drag a point away from its position to another one, the path that we dragged it along will be a line. A line has length, but it does not have width or height. It is one-dimensional, and it has one direction, back and forth. If we drag the line perpendicular to itself, that is, at a 90-degree angle to itself, we'll get a plane, or surface. This surface has length and width, but no height. It is two-dimensional and has two directions, back and forth and side to side. Now we can drag the surface perpendicular to itself, creating a volume. It has length, width, and height. It has three dimensions and thus three directions, back and forth, side to side, and up and down. Now where do we go from here? How do we achieve a four-dimensional object? We're left with nowhere to drag our volume perpendicular to itself. Anywhere we drag it, we'll only get another volume. It seems that there is no fourth dimension. In fact, there is. It just isn't one of space. There is another direction, back and forth in time. This is how most physicists define four dimensions, three of space and one of time. But it's hard to visualize time as a dimension like the others. It'll help if we back up a dimension, back into 2D, in a place called Flatland. Here, everything exists on a plane, going only back and forth and side to side. Nothing has height. But since we think easily in three dimensions, we can visualize time as simply being an upward direction. Here, our two-dimensional flatlander becomes a winding snake slowly going upward through time. So four dimensions can be easy enough to handle. But string theory doesn't just work in four dimensions, it works in eleven. Where are these other seven dimensions? Where can we fit all these extra axes on a graph? The answer is rather subtle. Imagine a thread so thin that it only has one dimension, length. Now imagine there's an ant walking on the thread. He can only go back and forth, right? Wrong. He can also crawl around the thread clockwise and counterclockwise. Now I hear you calling me a cheater. Technically this is entering the land of 3D. But string theorists believe there is an extra dimension. Remember, a dimension is a direction. An extra dimension at every point in space. These dimensions are curled up so small that we don't even notice them, allowing us to perceive only three spatial dimensions. The shape of all seven extra dimensions curled up at each point in space is called a calibai yao manifold. It is within these manifolds that strings vibrate in every dimension. You could visualize all the extra dimensions folded up like a rosebud. Now imagine if that rosebud blossomed. What would the world be like with 11 unfolded dimensions? So now you know where strings live and breathe, where they can vibrate in enough ways to create the myriad of fundamental particles that we know of in the universe. Fact.